He's now retired. He's now an analyst. He's a broadcaster. He's Drew Brees who joins us on the joins us on the program. Good morning, Drew. How are you? Dan, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. You're an analyst now. Yeah, I I guess that, that's the first time I've I've been introduced that way. So I just got to let that sink in for a second. <laughs> but former quarterback. That's weird. Um I, I don't. I, I actually think the uh, I think the transition's pretty natural. You know, um, I think that uh, you know you play you play long enough. Which man, I had the chance to play twenty years, right? Quarterback in the National Football League. Never in my wildest dreams do I think I'd I'd have that opportunity. Certainly, the opportunity to play that long. But um, you know, you basically go from the way that you prepare for a game, and then actually go out and execute that plan as a quarterback. And you now transition into a position where you're basically doing the same thing, but you're just instead of actually doing it, you're just you're talking about it, you're describing it, you're still an, you're still studying film the same way, you're still um, uh, anticipating what's going to happen, you know, based on uh, what you're watching. And I, I think at the end of the day, this is a really fun opportunity, a great opportunity. Uh, for me to just show my love and passion for the game of football in a different way and maybe a way that connects with fans even more from the perspective that, you know, I want to make it fun. I want to make it educational um, and and exciting. All right. Let me, uh, let me give you your first question as an analyst. Who should be the starter at quarterback for the saints? (laughs) You know what? Uh, It'll be interesting. Um, I think, however, that, you know, competition, um, is kind of laid out or, or plays out. Um, I think both those guys, you know, have some unique skill sets. Um, I'd say obviously Jameis and Taysom are different styles of quarterback. Um, and whatever offense is run, I think you, you know, just like you would do for any quarterback, you, you make the adjustments within the framework of the offense to fit the skill set that you're dealing with, you know? See, I would never let you get by if I was on football night in America with that answer. (laughs) Well, I've got, I really like both those guys. I think they both have the ability to be really good NFL quarterbacks. And so then it's just a matter of, Hey, they just happen to be in the same place right now, you know? Um, So we'll see how it plays out, but Taysom's proven he can win games. Um, I think Jameis, you know, leaving Tampa, coming to us, spending a year in our system, I think he's developed a, a new level of confidence um, and ability to run our system. So it'll be interesting to see. Did you realize the impact you had on Jameis? Because he got really emotional when he was asked about, you know, being there in New Orleans with you. Yeah, you know, that was, uh, man, that was humbling. Um, we had a great QB room. Like, man, we had a lot of fun together. Um, I I always took it as a great responsibility to help, um, help young guys, help, help the guys that were in our room. Um, I I know that some guys maybe take a different approach, you know, maybe they look at it as (laughs) this is the guy who's coming in trying to take my job. And so I'm not, I'm not going to extend any help or advice or guidance. Um, I, I took a very different approach because I knew how many veteran quarterbacks as I was coming up helped me and mentored me, and I, I can't tell you how much confidence that gave me and, and really how that helped guide me through through my early years, you know, when I, when I had some struggles. And so I've always kind of made it a, a commitment that if any young quarterback reached out to me or was in my room um, with the Saints, man, I was, I was going to do everything I could to help them be the best that they could be. And I, did, I tried to do that for Jameis. Yeah, your first game, you came in and replaced Doug Flutie, I believe, right? Yep. Who was that Drew Brees back then? How different is he than this Drew Brees now? Oh, man, light years. You know, you don't – what's amazing to me now – I mean, I've watched our offense evolve, right, with the New Orleans Saints from 2006 until now. You know, so 15 years of evolution. I mean, it is, it is the complexities of what we are doing now are light years different than back then, my first year um, with the, in the Saints offense. Like, I went back and looked at a, at a call sheet 
from our very first game against the Cleveland Browns in 2006. Give me, give me a for instance. Sheet. Give me an example here of what the call would have been okay. back then. Well, so, so for example, like the most basic formation, the most basic protection, the most basic play concept. Gun, red, right, 24 scan, Y Flutie. And by the way, that Y Flutie, that's a concept that everybody in the NFL runs. But when I was with the Chargers, it was one of Doug Flutie's favorite plays. So we nicknamed it Flutie because we were starting to transition to some no huddle stuff and we needed code words. So we code worded a concept Flutie. And we were the first ones to do that because Doug Flutie was on our team. Well, then you have coaches that end up going to different places, you know, um, from there and <laughs> taking that terminology. Yeah. So I, I'd be willing to bet there's probably about six to eight teams in the league that actually run Flutie and call it Flutie. <laughs> so it's <laughs> funny how those things just kind of spread. But, give, me, um, give me the most complicated but, call you ever had. Well, so it'd be like, uh, all right, so boogie to green left, slot. Let's go X short tight, pass 37 buster nudge, uh, Y flutie sting, uh, Z spear, kill, 53 tight and left. So, like, the, 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 the terminology <laughs> can be endless, you know. And, and here's the worst part is that, so that's that play call. And now you're in a loud stadium, and let's say the headset cuts off after the coach says, boogie to green left, so, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you don't realize how often that stuff happens, you know. And, or and then play clock's going down, and you just have to, I mean, you are, like, thinking on the fly. You're having to just pick up, you know, bits and pieces and put it all together. And, oh, by the way, maybe it's the, a different personnel group in the huddle. You know, that was a, such a specific thing. And somebody, you know, tweaked an ankle, and now they're on the sideline. Another guy's in, and you're getting him coached up on what his split is. It's a minus two split. It's not an outside edge split. Man, there's so much stuff is happening wow. and so fast that, man, it's, it's kind of a free-for-all at times. But, man, that's, that's what you love about the game. It's what makes it fun and exciting, never a dull moment. What would you keep from your last game? What's my what? What did you keep from your last game? What did I keep? Yeah, uniform, everything, play yeah, sheet. The memories, the, the memories of my kids on the field after the game probably was the most significant part of that. Um, so nothing, nothing um, tangible, you know, from like a, a jersey or cleats or anything like that. It was, I mean, listen, you, you don't. <clears throat> it's not like you just wake up one day and say, "Oh, I think I'm going to retire today." You know, I mean, that's that's a that's a process. You know, it's a couple year process that you you begin thinking about how how that's going to happen. And you um, knew so, before that game started, if you lose to the Buccaneers, that that's your last game. Well, I knew it was my last home game, you know, because we were going to go on the road and play in the playoffs, and hope, you know the Packers, and hopefully onto the Super Bowl. But um, so I knew it was my last home game. You know, yeah. there, so there was significance with that anyway. You didn't want to. You didn't want to leave the field though with Brady. Did it help in any way that you, if you're going to lose a game, you lose to Brady, or is that the last person you want to lose to? Well, I didn't. I didn't want to lose. Period. You know, I mean, considering that you're playing against uh, a guy like him, who I have a great relationship with, and you know, we go way back. You know, we played against each other in college, right? And so we've kind of been on this journey, you know, uh, together in a lot of ways. You know, we've kind of share one of the same mentors. Um, so, I mean, just a ton of respect. You know, I, I know, I think, I think any, any quarterback in the, in the NFL, um, only, only those guys can, can really understand um, what it takes to play that position and, and all the, the preparation and the, just the, just the time and the attention to detail and the headspace that that that, that takes up, um, you know, during the course of a, a season. But yeah, I mean, it, it's <clears throat> I've had the chance to play against him a, a lot of times, three times this year, you know. So that, that's we've got a great, great relationship, and obviously we know what kind of a player he is. Drew joins us on behalf of uh, Copper Compression, the number one bestseller on Amazon in the uh, personal care category. Are you going to be in the backyard throwing footballs with uh, fellow Hall of Famers here soon? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I. Uh, Are you on the other team? Because Favre gets Jerry Rice, and I never understood that. Like that's not fair. I, I, I was I was going to say this would be like the uh, you know the the battle of the the battle of the copper compression products, you know. But uh, I, I just I need to go choose I need to go choose my receiver. Yes. He, he chose Jerry Rice. That's a that's a pretty good one. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have tryouts. I'm I'm gonna conduct the copper compression tryouts. I like I'm, gonna, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull some guys, you know, pull some guys out of their living rooms and uh and, have a combine, and, and Drew. Have a com a combine. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's gonna be like a mini combine. I I've gotta choose my wide receiver um from, from history to, to take on Brett Favre and uh <laughs> and Jerry Rice, and then and then and then the random guys that are you know just in the park. Yeah, um, you know yeah. Tom for, from for UPS is out season. there. I, I I feel bad for him. Tom from UPS is out there trying to cover Jerry Rice. I mean, it's just not fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, you just take away the inside. That, that's that's what I would do. That's my <laughs> advice. Those, those, just take away the slant, and and then have somebody play over the top. Uh, can you? How many broken ribs did you have? And they, are they all healed now? Yeah, I, I believe they're all healed. I had I had eleven. I had eight on the left side, three on the right. Um, wow. But uh, I, I didn't even know you had that many ribs. I didn't either. I uh, didn't. I didn't know yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. That was. That was a crazy deal. I obviously never, never felt anything like that. And yet, at the same time, it wasn't. Um, I mean, it sounds crazy. Your, your mindset is such that man, nothing's going to take you off the field. You know, so. So you don't even you don't even recognize the severity of anything because you're just you're pushing through you're pushing through and the the eight that I fractured on the left side were in the Tampa the first Tampa game and not the first Tampa game the second Tampa game it was the Sunday night game at Tampa second quarter I I, I kind of get slammed to the ground on the left side and I knew something was wrong I mean it was a feeling I, I hadn't had you know the wind gets knocked out of you that happens a lot but all of a sudden I felt like man I'm having trouble breathing I can't rotate. I had a hard time throwing the ball in the second half of that game. I mean, it was functional. We got the job done. But, um, you know, we win that game big. And But I know something's wrong. I wake up the next day, go to the MRI, got all these broken ribs, and it's like, all right, well, let's just find a way to get to Sunday. I mean, that's that's really the saying amongst all NFL players. You know, find find a way to get to the next game, you know. And so, man, training room, rehab. I, I didn't practice much that week. I, I just tried to get ready to practice on Friday that week just to, and I was in, I was in so much pain on Friday. And so I was like, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And so I got out on Sunday and, and, you know, felt actually decent going into that next game, which was against the Niners. And then sure enough, in the second quarter of that game, I get thrown down on the other side and that's what fractured the three ribs and then punctured the lung. And that was, <clears throat> so it's one thing to have, have the, have all that going on on one side of your body, but then to have it on both sides, the problem at that point was as that game progressed, I mean, I finished the half and we, we took the lead. I felt like we had the game in hand, but when you sit at halftime for 25 minutes and then come back out, I, mean, I couldn't rotate. I couldn't do anything. So I basically went to Sean and like, man, I can throw the ball like 15 yards right now. That's about it. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think in my mind too, I was thinking, all right, I know this is going to put me out for a period of time. Um, I could go out there and make this thing worse, or I could just shut it down. Let's win this game, which I felt like we would anyway, and then try to make it back as quick as I could. Well, you don't have to worry about that now. I, I don't think if you get any kind of uh, rib damage, it'll be just from your kids hugging, hugging you, right? The only ribs will be on yeah, the that, Traeger grill. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> those are the only ribs I'm worried about right now. Uh, and how I'm seasoning those babies before I smoke them. Hey, uh, congrats. Good luck with uh, Copper Compression, uh, the uh, number one best seller on Amazon in the uh, personal care category. Play nice with uh, Brett Favre and company. And then uh, good luck on Football Night in America. <laughs> That's right. Copper Compression is going to help keep me young. I can sling it around in the yard of these 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 uh, future Hall of Famers I got running around this house. And your kids, yeah. Oh, that's what you mean, yeah. Future Hall of Fam- I Yeah. yeah. Um, hey. Uh, did, 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 you pick up, did you pick up on that one, Dan? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. It took me a little that's while. Right. It took me a little while. <laughs> that's why I only play, I played quarterback as a freshman in high school. That was as far as I got. <laughs> I love it. All right, man. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, bud. That's uh, Drew Brees.